Welcome to Creative Spaces Podcast with Guy Zwick, Chief Creative Officer of Highway 85 Creative. In each episode, we will discuss creative ways to define your space and build your brand. Once again, I'm sitting with Guy Zwick, Chief Creative Officer of Highway 85 Creative. We're going to go over some, some things today, process, best Western, and design tips. First question on the docket today. Let's talk about process. When you get a new client for the first time, what is the, the process that you adopt from project initiation to project completion? Talk to me about how you guys handle your clients, where you guys meet, what are the things you look at, all the way through to the end. I think that's an interesting question um, because it came up recently and I was in a selling mode with a new prospect and some new thoughts came out of my mouth and I think it just made me kind of recap how my approach to design and to selling people those design and ideas, how it has evolved over 20 years. Well, let's hear it. I want to hear it. Yeah, so it's interesting because as a salesperson for many, many years, you come at things at a very different approach compared to now having a, a decade plus as an entrepreneur and a business owner. So I see things slightly in a different, in, in a different uh, avenue, and I think it's an advantage for me from a sales tool, but also I think it just expounded on how I see uh, the, the customer's issues, challenges, uh, what they want to accomplish, from you know, just a much wider viewpoint. Right. Even the Best Western Honeywell, they were a small little company at one point. So it's all still the same. I, I think in the end, when you're designing, you've asked me from an exhibit standpoint. So if you've got someone who's exhibiting at a show, and now I, I, I think it's the next decade, it's even shows are going to evolve much like some of the bigger ones have, like CES. All of them are going to evolve and be. I'm bullish on trade shows right now. Mm-hmm. As much as people pray to the, the digital marketing gods, right? I mean, everybody's, most companies are devoting a lot more of their budget to the digital side of the house. However, most companies still do a lot of trade shows, which is, which is validation as to their, is that a legacy thing? Is that, it sounds like you don't think it's going to go away. If you're bullish on it, tell me why. Yeah, I'm very bullish on it from a couple of standpoints. Um, yeah, we all look at Silicon Valley and all the apps and all the online stuff and and that's only in its infancy stage, and it's it's only going to, you know, retail, you know, won't look like retail 10 years from now that it is today for sure. But people still want to meet the designers, meet the engineers, meet the, the people behind the products and the services and the brands, and there's no better place to do it than at a trade show where you can come to a trade show and see Comic-Con, for example, is not even the Comic-Con it is now. Now you have Silicon Valley there. You have movies there. You have, I mean, this used to be just a comic book show. And now it's a showcase for you've got people just showing up that are not even in the industry completely just to be a part of this event and being, and that's what these shows have become, more of even events. So just so that whole adage like, well, I got to be there because I got to be there. Um, is changing. Um, and this is across the board. You know, even shows like SEMA, uh, which is an auto uh, aftermarket part show, which is always very popular, on, and you see it on all the TV shows and stuff. Um, it's, the shows are changing, and the audiences are changing. Even the B2B selling is changing. And, and so you're getting a window into the soul of people um, uh, through the social media and their companies and, and what they do or what they want you to see. But all that unveiling is only making people want to see and experience more. So, for example, Apple, as we're talking about someone, they put on their whole big launching you know, of every event and make all these people come out to see it. And they, have the, they used to have their own trade show to put on and get all their vendors going. That all is, is growing in other areas and coming back strong. So where, you know, in the past... You might use commercials and other avenues. Now that's moving to social media, um, at least in a lot of cases, a better bang for your buck. Well, people are now starting to realize if I put some better effort into this trade show, where else am I going to go see 30,000, you know, 
potential customers, you know, a thousand potential business to business deals all in one swoop and a trade show. Yeah, that's, an, that's, you know, and I'm, I've been in the trade show game myself for about 15, and 20 by years. By the way, so, when so. the internet came out, we, we trade shows have, since the 80s of late, early 90s, I've all, you know, I've heard that, you know, they're, it's dying and now we're going to have webinars and we're going to do that. No, it's only getting bigger and growing better. Um, if anything, it's the shows themselves, the owners of the shows themselves that need to evolve a little bit in some of these different um, marketplaces. And, you know, some some shows are, are really doing a good job and others aren't. But as far as the potential, it's going to be huge. So the, the depth of trade shows as we know it is greatly exaggerated. Not only are they still there, they're evolving and they're a lot more robust because more and more people are aware of companies and you can only get so much online. You can only get so much insight into the company. Yeah, and and you, crave, you crave the... We're still humans. Yeah. So even with the digital and we're more connected, we're, we still crave. Right, if you're a the, salesperson, right, for a know. company, this is the best place to sort of get invite people to come see us. Let's talk. So you're trying to solve people's uh, uh, problems and set and help them, you know, either set goals or make the goals that they have. They're usually, when you go to trade shows, they're about getting leads, they're about getting exposure, they're about getting sales. Uh, I mean, in the end, it's a sales type thing, you know, whether it's business to business, whether it's end users, it all depends on the show. So you always have the same goal. You want to maximize their dollars. You want to see them get their returns and you want to make some money. Now, when I talk about being an entrepreneur now and having your own business, I'm a little bit more, A, sensitive to reaching those goals, right? Like legitimately having them reach those goals that they have. And also a little more sensitive to their budgets than I might have been in the past. <laughs> um, so those two things, it's great to see the goal, you know, have these goals. But in the end, you're selling someone an exhibit and then you kind of can say, hey, well, it's up to them now. I've given them this beautiful exhibit and now they've got to make it work. It's just as important that I make sure that they get the right sales staff uh, energized. They've got the right campaign behind it. You know, and sometimes your eye gets so focused, or I should say their eyes get so focused in on um, you know, some of the technical stuff and the budget that that end of the whole game, you know, yeah, shoot, uh, an extra thousand pounds and a couple thousand dollars is all worth it if you've got the right messaging, the right sales staff standing there, and you're at the right event and you're presenting in you know the right way. Um, so, say so I think what I'm what I'm hearing anyways, it's it's more. It's a lot more than just a trade show in a vacuum. You don't want to just show up and make a a big splash because your booth looks cool. It's about okay. Expect people to come to you at, and see you at your booth. What are you going to show them? What's the booth flow like? Do you have any demos going on? Are there people there to answer the right questions? How do you get people to the show in the first place? And after the show, how do you follow up? That whole, and you talk to clients about that yes, process. Absolutely. And I think this is a this is a great topic for another conversation. Well, here's an interesting one that just came up. I'm not going to give the name, but someone now wants to basically triple triple down on what they do at a trade show because they want to be bought in the next two years. So my objective by them is to now move them up to a 20 by 30 exhibit when they were doing 10 by 20s. Okay. They want to play the part of, and they do have this uh, technology that's a little advanced, but they solely want to go to these shows now because they want uh, they want to be gobbled up. It's, it's an they acquisition want be, strategy. They want to be a, an acquisition strategy. So here's an interesting thing. So they're giving me this whole objective, and they have some budget, but they want to push the envelopes. And you know, my first question is, well, what if you don't sell it in the next two years? And there was a, you know, there was this look that was like, well, basically we're effed. Right. Well, whoa. <laughs> so we're really throwing all in and it was all not really. So you still have to do business and you have to sell product and you have, still have to support the staff and the employees you have here for the next two years if you don't sell it as bullishly as you. And there was a like, yes. I mean, we're not, I'm kidding. We're not going on a business and all that. And, well, geez, the way we were just talking, you're asking me to just throw everything in there. And right. Really, so we reeled back a little bit okay. that, you know, you unpeel the layers a little bit. And it's like, okay, that is the end goal. But no, guy, you can't have $200,000 for me to go to these two shows no, but that's, and so, give me a double-decker exhibit. And 
but by the way, Double Decker came up. It did. Of course it, it did. Yeah, of course. No, but like, so there's there's nuances of boost. We can achieve that goal, but sure. guess what? We still got to be in business and we still got to. Right. So that was that, that's that whole point of that other side of me now that's like instead of like the young salesperson going, oh, my God, yes, let's run let's with this. it up. You talk. <laughs> see, that's – okay. There's – Talk the, some sensibility There's into nuances it. that come yeah. with experience. Yeah. And as a person who owns a business, you have to see both sides. We can make a big splash, but – if you have nothing there to continue it afterwards, a big splash is, is you know, is, is a waste of money. Yeah. But in general, though, when you have a new client, it is a you get to know them, you sit down, you talk, you just you just have these discussions about. Because here's the thing: back in the day, there probably weren't a lot of conversations about what do you want to accomplish at this trade show, how many people do you want to see, how many leads do you want to sort of qualify. It was more. I have to show up because if I don't, I'm going to be conspicuous in my absence. This whole trade show, if you're going to spend the money and the time and the resources to go to the show, it behooves the client, the the company, to think this through that you're talking about. The good people do this, um, but I would say 70% of all the exhibit sales people, especially the, the more modular and portable type selling model, is is you just get criteria. Do you need a reception desk? How many demos do you need? Do you need a TV? Do you have a looping video? Right. You know what I mean? It's just you're just getting all this very vanilla information which is easy to get from the client. The client doesn't doesn't know and you walk them through all that stuff and then you take some stuff from the website and you and you throw them a picture of it. Yeah, that next level of that, really helping someone yeah. is to say what has to be true when we finish this show. I love to ask that question. And I typically get a stare. Well, what do you mean? Well, what has to be true? Yeah. What we what, go to these three events. What right. has to be true when we're said we're done? When this is all you said and done, you need a million dollars in sales. You right. need five more leads, and then yeah. well, and then then you start to walk through all these things, and then it takes it. Believe it or not, it takes a lot to pull them out. And interesting, all the ones that are very good at at going to trade shows and turning them into. I have quick answers for all that. Right. I got 3,200 leads last year. I want to beat the 3,200. We right. converted this. We've done this. We have a whole follow-up set up for when we get it. You know. Right. So um, this, this design, if, if you – this kickoff call basically informs the entire bill because if the, if the entire objective is acquisition versus leads versus we're brand new, we want to be seen as a player, you might approach, approach that exhibit differently. Now – this is a, a, a topic for a different podcast, but we just dipped into success criteria, and we just dipped into, okay, you want to do more, Mr. Client, than just showing up at a show. We can help you do that. So is Highway 85, do they offer those services, or will they offer those services? It's its own category for us from a selling standpoint that we like to offer clients that they can go granularly and show by show by show. They could go, let's just talk about the whole year objectives and let's make sure we're marrying up everything right. The exhibit, the staff, the support, and you got you know all those things together. Your marketing team is in touch with the sales team, which is in touch with the exhibit company, it's the exhibit manager, blah, 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 blah. Okay. You know? And it's a well-oiled machine. And most of the time, even these big companies, it's very disjointed. Oh, yeah. You know, very disjointed. So... It's the trade shows have been in the budget since well since this all started. So if it's it's easy just to keep on doing what was done, sometimes it's hard to challenge. Okay, let's ask why we're doing it, and if we can get an answer, then we can customize a solution, you know, an exhibit plus 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 solution that helps you get to your goals. And it's I think it's surprising to me how many exhibit houses don't do that. They just do the whole. Do you want demos? Do you need you know, AV? Do you need it, it, rug? Uh, Full stop. I just thought of this, and it is totally true. But for a lot of these companies, there is one to two, but usually one show that is their Super Bowl. There's a show for a lot of these people that they have a Super Bowl. Some treat it that way. A lot of them, after doing it 20 years, stop to start treating it like a Super Bowl. Uh, and uh, But that's the truth of it. You, I mean... We know what Super Bowl commercials do and uh, the emphasis and the buzz and all that that's still across the board. That uh, if you go into the Him show and you're a medical software company, that is your Super Bowl. So you should be treating it as such. Interesting that you mentioned this. If you do the same Super Bowl show, 
for 15 years, you get a little bit bored and you just kind of check the box and you don't really look at it with new energy or new a new perspective. So an, um, a partner like Hobby 85 will almost force them. That's part of what you do is, hey, listen, let's just – you ask them the question, why are we doing this and are we doing it the right way? Yeah, you that's, question that's, things. That, that's the whole part of us adding that other service to our offering is right. so that I think you need to recharge yourself year to year or, you know, right. every so often um, or else you just can complain, especially if it's working. Sometimes it's working for a while. So, you, yeah, stay the course. You don't need to, to reevaluate every, every every month. Um, but, you know, then... You know, that's when things move sideways. People make moves. The next thing you're like, oh, you know, I've fallen behind. And wow, how did they get, you know, ahead of us? How did our competitor make that leap? And, you know. And people, and it's just as human nature, every once in a while when you're, when when there's a a fresh new, you know, coat of paint or a new, if something just changes a little bit, the energy is felt. And people are a bit more amped than your sales guys and your technicians. Everybody's a lot more. And that's, if you're going to show up at a booth, don't just show up and just be this same old, same old. Have something to talk about. Have something for the people who are staffing it to be excited about. And that, that's always good for a brand. Thank you for listening to Creative Spaces Podcast. For more information about Highway 85 Creative, visit us at highway85creative.com.